Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. I'd like to go over this head CT. Very interesting, very uncommon finding. And here's a little perusal of the entirety of the head CT. This is a non-enhanced head CT. So I want you to ponder and consider what the diagnosis here might be. Okay. So, again, we're going to start out with a description of the findings before we commit ourselves to an actual diagnosis. And there are some interesting findings here, uncommon, as I say. So, there is an area of increased attenuation in the medial aspect of the left parietal lobe, I would say, and portions of the occipital lobe. Uh, this also involves a portion of the left lateral ventricle posteriorly and there's also a relatively high attenuation area here that crosses the midline seems to be connecting with the region of the straight sinus okay and there are some associated calcifications because remember there's no IV contrast here so here are calcifications of the falx. Here's one here. And so these are calcifications. Some of the more dense structures are embolic material like this that have been used to embolize this structure. So what do you think this might be? Importantly, you'll see that portions of it reveal these high attenuations to be tubular in character. Fairly tubular. So this, even though it's pretty large, has an elongate, somewhat tubular character. And you could argue that this is a tubular structure going from here to here. Okay, and then let's go up a little bit higher. Here's a tubular structure here, maybe here. So high attenuation, here's another tubular structure here and one here, maybe here. So we have then high attenuation tubular structures with associated calcifications. What would that bring to mind? blood vessels and arteries specifically would develop calcifications and so could high flow venous structures this very large tubular structure is a vein draining this abnormality and taking it to the straight sinus which connects with the sinus venous system in the brain so what we have then is an arteriovenous malformation an AVM and the calcifications are characteristic of an AVM And this beam hardening artifact, that's what this is called, beam hardening artifact, uh, reflects the metal that's been used as an embolic agent to try to decrease the amount of flow to this AVM. Now look down more inferiorly, and you'll see that the vessels in the skull base and in the base of the brain look more prominent than usual. So here you have the basilar artery and it gets pretty big and is quite tortuous swinging swinging pretty quickly from left to the right and then the tortuosity of this enlarged basilar artery is causing it to push upward on the underside of the third ventricle and distorting that third ventricle here's a vessel that you you just generally don't see 
in this area. You don't see a big prominent vessel in this area, so I'm not sure what name I would give it. I'm not sure if it's even Venus or arterial. I would guess probably Venus. So this is a typical arterial venous malformation with several areas of high attenuation which constitute the blood in arteries and veins, associated calcifications, and in this case, metallic embolic material which has been used to treat this AVM. Typically these do not have much mass effect and you can see that the cortical sulci overlying this abnormality are comparable on the left side near the AVM as compared with the right side. Okay, let's see. The vessels in the skull base and circle of Willis are all pretty plump. Here we have middle cerebral artery and it's this, in this area it's about the size of the internal carotid artery or bigger. Here's an MCA artery on the left side which is providing some flow to the arterial venous malformation. You can kind of see how here is the MCA, the M1 segment of the middle cerebral artery on the left, and here is the middle cerebral artery in the sylvian fissure. And you see how large this vessel is? You don't usually have vessels this large in the sylvian fissure and you don't see them on the other side. And that vessel there, if you follow it up, it's still right here, here, and then there's another one there. And if you follow it, you'll see that it goes to the arterial venous malformation. It's in this fold. So that's one of the arteries supplying the arterial venous malformation. This basilar artery is quite large and, and it's actually producing mass effect on the pons. So you can see the indentation here in the ventral aspect of the pons to the left of midline. So this is an arterial venous malformation which has been treated but there's still a lot of high flow I would say. So I think you'd need to do an arterial an arteriogram in order to really see how much of the flow to the arterial venous malformation has been shut down. MRI also could be done which would show flow states with flow sensitive parameters in the imaging protocol. Okay, so a very unusual case we don't see very many of these arterial venous malformation, in this case post-embolization. And in terms of reviewing other things, we can see here that the eyeball has a lens. And the lens is the densest non-calcified structure in the body, which is why it looks so white on CT, meaning it's of high attenuation. This little fold here is the location where the middle cerebral artery courses and it's called the middle cerebral artery cistern. Cistern is just a small space or potential space where CSF is located and is part of the, the area where the CSF circulates uh, along with the ventricles. So for example here's Here's the pons, and so this is prepontine cistern, and the lateral portion of the prepontine cistern is the ambient cistern, ambient cistern on the left and right. Here you can see the basilar artery, which doesn't look big there, but it gets big. And it's just the flow state, the high flow state of this basilar artery and all the other arteries because of the shunt that an AVM provides. So instead of having arteries go to capillaries and then go back to veins, which 
impedes the flow of blood. So when you have an AVM, you, you don't have the normal capillary bed of the brain that would ordinarily slow down the blood flow. So a high flow state going directly from arterial structures to venous structures gives you bigger vessels. The high flow state in the arteries and particularly the veins causes the vascular structures to increase in size and that's what we're seeing here. And even in some of these more obscure points this is an enlarged vessel. You wouldn't ordinarily see one that big and of course you don't on the other side. And here are the frontal horns of the lateral ventricles. Here's a third ventricle which looks like it has a little bit of displacement because of the mass effect from this AVM. AVMs typically produce very little mass effect unless they hemorrhage. And here, as I pointed out earlier, there is a comparable pattern of sulci in the hemispheres bilaterally, but less pronounced sulci in these areas compared with that. So there is some mass effect. Now this appears to be some venous drainage that's going possibly directly to the superior sagittal sinus. And I think that this structure here indicates that that is probably just what's happening. Okay, so an uncommon finding, even rare to see an arterial venous malformation in the brain. In this case, it's been embolized, but despite that, there is still evidence of, an, of a high flow state in the arteries supplying the arterial venous malformation.